This episode of Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the world's worst diabetes mom. Real life stories of parenting a child with type 1 diabetes. Available as a paperback, ebook, and audiobook. Read reviews and get your copy today at Amazon or at diabetes connections.com. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. Welcome to what I'm calling a classic episode of Diabetes Connections. This interview originally aired Halloween week of 2017, but it's a really good one. And we have a lot of new listeners and a lot of people who might discover it now for the first time. So if that's you, hi. I'm your host, Stacey Sims, and my son was diagnosed with type 1 almost 14 years ago as a toddler. Now, Halloween this year is going to look very different, just like everything else in 2020. But I hope you find a way to celebrate Halloween that is safe, that feels good to your family, and as always, doesn't let diabetes get in the way. If you have questions about Halloween, if you are a newer diagnosed family, or you just are confused, you want to try something new this year, we did a great Ask the D-Moms episode about that, and I will link that up in this episode homepage. You just go over to diabetes-connections.com, and when you see this episode, click on it, and it will have a transcript, and it will have links, and one of those links will be over to that Ask the D-Mom episode, where me and my friend and wonderful author, Maura McCarthy, give advice. We get questions all the time, and we answer them the best we can. We did a whole episode about Halloween. My guest for this episode is all about Halloween. Now, not only was she diagnosed on Halloween, but she loves the holiday. You're going to hear her family. I mean, they do it up big and they always have. Kelly Kunick was diagnosed with type 1 in 1977, 43 years ago. And yes, she really was diagnosed on Halloween. She is a diabetes advocate, myth buster, consultant, writer, and speaker. Kelly launched her very funny and insightful blog, Diabetes Aliciousness, in 2007 with that goal of busting diabetes myths and spreading validation through humor and ownership and advocacy. She is also a daughter sister, cousin, niece, and aunt to people living with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. That incredible family experience really gives her a unique perspective. So here is my interview with Kelly Kunick on the eve of her 40th anniversary with type 1 diabetes. Kelly, thanks for joining me. Um, you know, one of the things I get a lot in parenting groups that I'm in is, you know, what do I do about Halloween? And, and so we're going to be talking about that this week. But I thought it would be really fun, and it's just a good excuse to talk to you, to find out more about being diagnosed on Halloween. I, I shouldn't have said it'll be fun. It's always fun to talk to you, Kelly, but that's not fun at all. Thanks for coming on with me. Well, thank you for having, and um, thank you for doing what you do. And I think Halloween's an excellent topic. Yeah. Tell us your story. You were diagnosed. And I, I can't believe as we're talking here, you're coming up on 40 years for your diagnosis. Yes. Yes, I am. And that's crazy, and I can't believe it, and I'm just as shocked as you are. <laughs> but yes, it will be 40 years with, you know, celebrating my type 1 diabetes diagnosis on Halloween, and it was interesting, and what? I remember a lot of it. Yeah, tell us. I just remember a lot of whispering that week with my parents and my siblings. You know, I have siblings who, who also have type 1, um, and my dad had type 1. And, you know, Halloween every year was a pretty big deal in our house. And it was up to my siblings to come up with my Halloween costume or help me come up with it because there were so many of us. <laughs> um, and I couldn't get them to commit. And I remember coming home from school one day and my sister, Debbie, who had diabetes and who passed away from diabetes, met me at the door and she asked me if I was thirsty. Mm. And I was, of course. And she gave me a tab and I downed it. And then she asked me if I wanted another one, which of course I did. And I downed it. Mm. And then she asked me if I wanted another one. And we're talking about tab, the diet soda, because just to be clear, right? I mean, right. I hate to have right. to sit, clarify soda. that tab. Right. It's tab, the diet soda. And, um, I drank the third one, and then, of course, I, I had to go to the bathroom, 
And she said, well, you're not, you know, I'm not going to let you go to the bathroom unless you pee on this test tape, which was a way back in the, the late seventies to test what your sugar was. Mm. And I was smart enough to know that that wasn't a good thing because there was test tape in all of our bathrooms because of my two sisters with type one and my father. And I looked at my sister and I told her I didn't have to go to the bathroom. Oh, geez. And I was a pretty stubborn little girl and I refused to go to the bathroom for like an hour. And I was dying at that point. Like I literally was doubled over in pain, but I knew that something was up and that if I peed on that test tape, something was going to happen that I didn't want. And I finally, you know, I did. I, I, I said I would do it. And turned to color it shouldn't have <laughs> and there were lots of whispers and I remember my parents being on the phone with CHOP Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania that night and it was the night before Halloween and I don't really remember a lot but I remember the next morning we got up very early and we drove to Philadelphia to CHOP and I remember waiting in the registration office to register because as a patient because we'd never been to CHOP before and then the physical exam and I remember them hooking me up with an insulin drip and I was trying to make my parents laugh so I called it the Alaskan pipeline I'm like look mom it's the Alaskan pipeline look at me I have my own Alaskan pipeline but I really wanted to go out trick-or-treating. I wanted to go out in costumes and talk of all these different costumes I could wear. And I loved Halloween, not just because of the candy, but I loved dressing up in costumes. That was kind of my thing. As a kid, I was always dressing up in costumes. Like if I could have gone to school in a cape, I would have. <laughs> um, but back in the 70s, it wasn't really acceptable. I was constantly dressing up in costumes. And I tried to convince a nurse who was dressed like a clown, that the results were inconclusive. Again, I watched a lot of television. And you're, wait a minute, you're, they, eight, uh, you're eight years old and you're trying to tell the, the medical professionals around yeah, you? Yeah, because... Maybe it's not, you know. Well, I I used to watch Quincy. It was on <laughs> after Carol Burnett. Yes, Quincy. And so I was I would just like repeat everything that Quincy would say. And I'd be like, you know, I think the tests are inconclusive. And if you just let me go out trick-or-treating, I promise you... I won't eat any candy and my parents will bring me back tomorrow. Oh. But I have all these costumes lined up and she looked at me and she just said, Oh honey, the tests aren't inconclusive. You have diabetes. And no one had said that. And I said, Oh, okay. I guess I have diabetes. Like, okay. And I didn't really think that's when I started not to like clowns so much. <laughs> um, yeah. And I remember them telling me that I could go trick or treating in the hospital that they could provide me with a costume, which was subpar. There was no way I was walking around in those costumes. They had no creativity <laughs> behind them at all. And then I could only get dietetic Oy. candy. And I was like, nope, no, thank you. Not doing that. I know what that is because of my sister. There's no way. I know what that does to your stomach. I know that what it does to your teeth. I'm not doing it. And so I stayed in and watched TV, you know, and, kind of waited till my parents left to lose it a little bit because I didn't want them to get upset. I could tell that they were upset and I didn't want them to get any more upset. Kelly, there's so much to talk about that you've said already here, but it strikes me now, you've said a couple of times that you're trying not to upset your parents. You know, I mean, you were eight years old at the time. Your perspective is different. It's, you know, your dad has had type one. You had other people in your family, sisters, other people in your extended family. Why was it so important to you? Do you remember? It's just amazing how we try to protect the people around us. They didn't need protecting. You did. You're the, you know, you were the little kid. I think I knew from a very early age, I was one of six children. It was not necessarily a calm household. <laughs> you know, there were six kids. There were two parents. There were various extended family, grandmothers, great uncles living with us, um, which was wonderful. It was a great way to grow up, but I knew that diabetes, I didn't know exactly what it was, but I grew up with it, if mm. that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And I knew there was a stress level involved with it, even though I didn't understand it. I knew that 
some of my siblings and my dad would take needles at the table before they ate. I knew that our bathrooms were sort of set up like a lab with test tubes and things like that because they didn't test blood sugar back then. They tested urine. I knew insulin was very, very precious and a bit expensive. And I just knew that I like to make people laugh when they were stressed. Mm. And I think when you're the youngest child, diabetes or not, that's kind of the thing. You just sort of become the comic mm. because everybody's watching what you do. You're the youngest. You're the baby. Oh, isn't that cute? She's so funny. You know, and I, I knew I couldn't articulate it and I couldn't explain it, but I knew that it was big for my parents this diagnosis or whatever was going on because I couldn't even articulate it like I am now. But I knew that I knew they were sad and they were trying to act like they weren't, Mm. you know what I mean? And I knew that for a fact. So I was trying to make it easier for them. And look, kids are smart. They just are. And they see, and they handle things in certain ways. And, you know, when you see your dad, who's, you know, trying to keep it together, you want to make it easy for him, yeah. especially when it has to do with you. It, it just, it's it amazing is. to me that, and you're right, kids know they are much smarter than I think we give them credit for. And even Benny um, at two was trying to make me feel better. You know, it's, it's hard to see your parent be upset. And that's a, you know, a kid wants to fix that most of the time. So even he Well, was, they do, and that's what it is. Yeah. So, so how it happens on that Halloween I stayed in and watched TV. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I I wasn't going to go out trick or treating in the hospital if I had to have diet like diet. They called it dietetic candy when I was growing up. Dietetic. It's what it was called, and it was disgusting, and it caused a lot of gastrointestinal distress. And they had something like a Jolly Rancher type of dietetic candy that would make your teeth stick together. Oh jeez. For like five minutes while it melted in your mouth, you could not separate your jaw. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not kidding. It's God's truth. I, and it just wasn't worth it to me. I had tried this stuff because my sisters would get it in their Easter baskets or, you know, family friends would bring it over for them. And it was disgusting. And, you know, when you're little, you don't know the difference and you're like, ooh, chocolate. Right. And it really did cause a lot of problems. Oh, and I knew that. I, I mean, you learned it very young. Uh, yeah. I didn't even have diabetes. I learned it. And I was like, <laughs> that is not good stuff. So I was like, I'm not. A, I don't have my costume choices with me. I'm not wearing these drugstore costumes. <laughs> like, I have closets full of homemade costumes that are very good. And I'm not trick-or-treating and working so hard for this disgusting candy. Um, I love it. Was, but was Halloween, was Halloween... Ruined for you, or the following year, nope. did you dig out one of those costumes nope. that he picked up? Oh, God. I went out. I never missed a Halloween growing up. Mm. The rule was like every other kid, I will give that credit to my parents. I never missed a Halloween. I went out with my pillowcase because that held more. Hmm. And we trick or treated for hours. I would eat some candy while I was trick or treating because we were walking like three miles. And then I came home, went to the living room dumped the pillowcase on the floor, did the division like all the kids do, mm-hmm. candy like they like, candy they don't like, candy they would consider trading, money because people would throw in nickels and quarters, boxes of raisins, which immediately hit the trash. <laughs> and my mom would, yeah, it's, I mean, it was like any other thing. And my mom would say, okay, what's the candy you want to keep? And she would keep it. And we would figure it out, like, when I could have it. And then in a week or two, somehow that Halloween candy would disappear. Sometimes my mother would hide it after a few weeks in the top of her closet or on top of the china cabinet, which kind of dipped in so you couldn't see what was laying on top. She would put it. Or those cabinets on top of the refrigerator that hold nothing (laughs) and are really hard to get to. But after a few weeks, it just would slowly disappear. And she'd say, oh, your, your siblings ate it. Oh, Daddy must have gotten into it. You know, my mother was a chocoholic. I mean, but we always had fun. I always went out with my friends. 
Great. And I give my parents a lot. Of, I remember going to like a Halloween party somewhere, maybe in fourth grade. I don't remember, but there was a cake. I think my mom even brought it. I think my mom brought a cake with ghosts on it. <laughs> and that was a big deal. And the ghosts were made out of icing like with toothpicks. And I remember like, I want one of the ghosts, but they didn't say I couldn't. And that was really smart of them. They didn't make it a bad day. They made it a fun day. It was a fun day. Halloween's fun. They kept it that way. That's wonderful. I mean, it's just so great to hear. Did you have a favorite costume over all those years? Oh, I just that. oh my God, are you kidding me? I was a gypsy, which was actually my mother's mother's costume from a um, Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, gosh. She was an orator in England. So I had this beautiful, like, corseted top that all the girls wore in my family. Mm. And we I was a gypsy, and I had a scarf and a big skirt. I was tiger lily for like two years in a row, three years in a row maybe, because I was obsessed with tiger lily. <laughs> I did not like Wendy Darling. I could not relate. I thought Wendy Darling was a whiner. I thought tiger lily was a badass, and she kind of looked like me a little bit. She had long, dark braids, and... I had long, dark braids. Like, she's who I related to, and I was her for two, maybe three years. I was a jack-in-the-box one year. I won an award for that. Cool. Most creative costume. Yeah. I mean, I love Halloween. I don't – I think it's a great – I still think it's a great holiday. So I, I don't, don't – yeah, and I don't like when people – and I understand why they say it. I shouldn't say I don't like, but I, I always tell people to mind their words when it comes to diabetes. Like, don't let your kids know that you're dreading it because it really is a fun holiday. Look, it's great not to be you for a night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Diabetes or not. Yeah. Like, it's going to be a challenge. But today they they give away much more you know prize-related gifts today than they ever did when I was growing up. And look. We are blessed that we can count carbs today. Nothing is off limits. So, well, uh, let's talk about that. Let's you know, go on. Let's just, you know, we'll get on the soapbox for a minute because, Kelly, yeah. people who know you, sure. you have opinions. Opinions are welcome. <laughs> I have a radio friend who says agreement is not required. So let's let's just talk about it. And you can say whatever you want here because as a parent of a kid with type 1, Halloween is is scary and is, your, oh, my gosh, everything's got to change. It says, how do I do this? And then... I have actually found, if I could talk about me for a minute, the hardest part for Halloween for us has always been my well-meaning neighbors because I have a, a daughter who's three years older than Benny. And since the time they were very little, we did Halloween just like you guys did. We get all the candy. We put most of it away, even without diabetes. You're going to throw half that candy away or give it to yeah. the troops or to the dentist or whatever. So my neighbors, bless their hearts. You know, those first couple of years, they would say, here's a Hershey bar for Leah and here's a sugar free hard candy for Benny. You know, and be like, oh, right. And I'm not letting my two year old eat a hard candy anyway. <laughs> but right. Right. Yeah. And some of them did have little prizes. I mean, I have one neighbor who always has a little toy for him, like, you know, a, a, a penny toy or something so cute and so nice. And I never said to people you know, at the door on Halloween, no, thank you. We're not taking that sugar-free candy. But, you know, maybe a couple of weeks later when you're seeing them at the grocery store or elsewhere, you can kind of work it into the conversation. But I always tell parents, just go. And like you said, you're walking so much half the time that they go low when they're out there, right? Yeah. I mean, look, when I said I walked three miles at night, my hometown was only a mile long. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, not really big, but we walked so much and for so many hours that my parents encouraged me to have that chocolate bar right. because they knew I really needed it. And I, I wasn't, you know, when I was little to treat a low, we would eat an orange. My mom didn't even bother cutting and wrapping an orange in tinfoil. She said, oh, no, she's going to have, she's going to have a Reese's peanut butter cup and she's walking around because she's <laughs> going to need it. But like you, I still get asked, you know, can you eat this? Is this okay? And I always tell people, like, there's not too much I can eat. I don't eat liver. I won't eat liver. <laughs> so, <laughs> Not even with you know, onions? Not but, even chopped liver? No. No, I don't <laughs> like it. And, you know, I know that it, I, I probably should like it because I run a little bit on the anemic side. I have my whole life, but I can't stand liver. But, yeah, I'm like, the only thing I can't eat is liver. You know, everything <laughs> else is game on. So, And like you said, like, diabetes or not, you divide the candy up and 
somehow it disappears in the next few weeks because nobody functioning pancreas or not should be eating all of that candy. You just can't. Nobody can. Adult, child, child with diabetes, adult diabetes, anybody. People, you know, it's just too much sugar. But, you know, I'm sure you talk to your neighbors and tell them something similar because I don't know. It's, it's really great to have people thinking and looking out for your kids. But sometimes what they're trying to do, like for me personally, I think there's a lot of damage with the sugar alcohol, yeah. like gastrointestinally, not damage, but oh, side it's effects. Awful. Ugh, it's gross. What I it's always try to, so. yeah. and what I try to tell other parents, like the way I handle it is just, you know, you don't say don't do this. You say, please do that. You know, you say, oh, wasn't Halloween fun? Hey, you know, we're trying something new this year or maybe a couple of weeks before, you know, my doctor says, even if your doctor never says, you know, my doctor says that it'll be really fun and easier for Benny if he just gets all the regular candy and then we figure it out at home because, right, the right. sugar alcohols aren't good for him or, you know, it's just better to have the real stuff. And But thanks so much. So just nothing special. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks at Halloween. And that way nobody feels bad. You're not saying, you know, hey, you bought us that candy and we never ate it and it made him poop for three days. You know, right. you're never you're not doing that. Right. Because, <laughs> you know what? It's it's expensive, too. That's yeah. the thing. Like, here people are really looking out for you and, right. and your child and spending more money than they should for a very little bit of candy because it's, you know, a sugar-free chocolate bar or whatever. Oh, gross. And it's expensive. So... I'm thinking here, we're talking about trick or treating, we're talking about all the costumes and everything, but it's been 40 years. If you don't mind me asking you to reflect on that a little bit, some things with diabetes never change. I imagine some things have changed quite a bit. You know, your bathroom probably doesn't look like a, a laboratory with those test tubes. Are you doing any reflection no, this year? You know, I am, but so much has been going on in our world lately. Like, mm. I was going to, I really wanted to do it upright for my 40th. And, so much has happened over the summer and in the fall around our world with the elements and things like that. Last night I and yesterday I was working all day at a fundraiser for Puerto Rico mm. that I haven't really gotten it together to have this huge celebration I wanted to have. And five years ago when it was my 35th, I was smack dab in the middle of Hurricane Sandy. Oh, right. Oh, my where God. I was lit, where I lived was hit very hard from Sandy. So again, everything sort of went to the wayside. So I think I'm going to do something for the year as far as reflecting, That'd because be it's not just going to be about the day, a year of reflection and bringing it into the 41st year. I mean, quite, quite honestly, when I was little, I didn't necessarily think a person could live 40 years with diabetes. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I like that's, I, and I don't think as a child, you don't think that far. Right. You know what I mean? You're just very immediate in the now for the most part, because that's what childhood is. Mm. It's the now. But yeah, I mean, I look back and I, I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, I can't believe it's been four years. I can't believe all the changes. I can't believe I started with this journey with people who aren't here anymore in my family. And that makes me sad. But I try and live and be positive for them. So that's good. I mean, I just want it to be a good year and I want it to be a great life. And, you know, we take the good and the bad, right? The vinegar with the sweet. Yeah. So to. there are days I get annoyed with diabetes. Don't get me wrong, but I really try and focus on the positive because if I, if I let it bring me down every day, then what kind of life is that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's not going anywhere. So I like to say some days I'm in charge, other days diabetes is in charge. Like some days we're both kind of like co-executives of Kelly Kunick. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, there are days where I'm the CEO and there are days when diabetes is nipping its heels and trying at my, you know, like, no, I want to be in charge, but I try and work with it as much as I can. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I don't want to hate it. There are moments when I dislike it intensely, but I don't want to hate myself. I can open up any magazine and that tells me I'm not tall enough, not skinny enough, not busty enough. That's really easy. You know, if yeah. I hated my diabetes then I would be hating me and I don't need that. I'm awesome. 
You are awesome. But I have to ask you before we wrap up here, tell me about your blog because I'm going to, I always mess it up. Diabetes deliciousness. Okay. So what, where does that come yeah, from? I, and I love it. Okay. First of all, I'm such a dork. It was <laughs> supposed to be called diabetes. I was supposed to be called diabetes delicious. Now, when I started blogging, which will be 10 years in November. Oh, great. Go figure that one out. I had no idea what blogging was. Okay. None. It just looked like a word file and I could do a word file. I couldn't create a website. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah. And blogger was essentially a fancy word file, right? That you could upload pictures to. And there was always this thing I'd say, Oh, that's so diabetes delicious. Like if I went surfing and I got out of the water and my blood sugar was like 125, so I didn't go too low. I was like, oh, that's diabetes delicious. Or if I went out to dinner and I had a big dessert, or maybe it was dinner at an Italian restaurant, which is always a bit of a challenge for me, pasta wise. Mm. And I checked my blood sugar a couple hours later and it was like 170. I was like, oh, that's diabetes delicious. I nailed it. So it was always kind of a goal. Diabetes and delicious was always a goal to achieve. It was always just hitting the norm in my life, doing my normal everyday things, but celebrating it. You know, again, if I eat a pasta dinner and two hours later I was 175, that's pretty, that's like Nirvana. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? It oh, yes. Totally Nirvana. It was diabetes delicious. And so I started to fill out the blog information that I wanted to do. And at the end, right before I hit enter, I put the N-E-S-S. So made it diabetes aliciousness. I changed it because let's make it more difficult to say and pronounce the spell. Why not? <laughs> Again, I had no idea what I was doing. The only blog I'd ever read was Perez Hilton. And I didn't even know it was a blog. I thought it was a gossip website. <laughs> and it's hard to imagine, right? But in 20, 2007, we weren't even on Facebook. I mean, it, you know, it was it's no, so different. I mean, it was so different and I had, now I can't change it. And I even changed it on the business cards I had printed up. I actually put diabetes delicious and people are like, what? So it's diabetes deliciousness, like diabetes delicious, N-E-S-S. Or you could just say diabetes delicious. I mean, I know it's a bitch to spell. It's my own fault. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it. But it was 2007. I didn't know what I was doing. The interwebs was a new and exciting place. I didn't know there was a diabetes online community. Yeah. Seriously. I had no clue. Why did you start then? No. Like what, what made you jump in? You know, I had left a long-term relationship and I'd left a career. And I, believe it or not, I wanted to sell insulin pumps, right? Mm. Because I really felt like my I had been pumping since 2002. I come from a family of sales reps and performers. It's basically like there's no doctors or lawyers in my family. We're all like salesmen, and performers, or teachers. And I was always the example that doctors would use. Like, you got to meet this patient. She's doing really well. My doctors would have me talk to teens and parents would stop me when they would see my insulin pump at the drugstore and have them talk to their children. And I thought... I really felt like insulin pumping changed my life. And I thought, well, I want to sell these things. And I sent my resumes out and nobody would talk to me. Nobody. Mm. And I had a marketing background and a writing background where I worked for several local newspapers and magazines. And I was a writer and someone had mentioned blogging or personal journaling. And I thought, oh, okay. Hmm. And then, of course, there was the whole, like, a celebrity said they weaned themselves off insulin. And I got really mad at that particular celebrity. <laughs> and I started this blog and then didn't know what I was doing. And I ended up calling this celebrity's publicist in the L.A. and New York office. And I think I frightened the gatekeepers so much at both offices that the publicist ended up calling me back. And we played phone tag and I ended up speaking with the publicist and saying, look, I think so-and-so was misdiagnosed. And if this Oscar award-winning person can be misdiagnosed, then how many other people mm. can be misdiagnosed? And I really do think that's the case. 
but I was also upset because I knew of several young women with diabulimia whose parents had mentioned this particular celebrity as someone to aspire to. You know, she has type one diabetes and look how great she's doing. And when I tell you, I used to have parents come out of the woodwork and still do to talk with, about their children to me. Um, I, I, I mentioned that to the to the publicist. I said, "Look, I don't know if you're aware. There's this thing called diabulimia, and it's very dangerous and it's detrimental to health. Mostly, it's women, young girls, and women with type one diabetes. But you know, I know that young boys and men are also and it's, just, it's just, anybody can have it. You know what I mean? And so, there has to be a better way to articulate this." And I really think if she came out with a statement, and again, I'm not blaming this particular celebrity. I think that's on the onus of the publicist. And she just wouldn't budge. And it got me so angry. And I think that was my first blog post. And I didn't know what I was doing. I just used it as a writing exercise every day on a subject that I knew intimately. Mm. And nobody read it except my friends. And... I can tell you who the first person to leave a comment was Bernard Farrell. And that was like two and a half months after I started blogging. And I didn't know that this community existed. And when I found it, it was pretty life changing. So I'm very lucky, you know, but I had no idea what I was doing. I certainly wouldn't have made it such a crazy name. <laughs> I, I think it's great now. Doing. Like, I had no idea. I just knew it was this great outlet for me to get all my feelings out. And I didn't even realize how badly I needed that until I started doing it. Yeah. Um, and we should and just... I learned so much. Oh, of course. Yeah. Let's circle back to Halloween because there's so much we can talk about. And Kelly, I'll have to have you back on. But let's circle back to Halloween yeah. because... You know, you were talking about food and food issues, and everybody has food issues anyway. And then if you have diabetes, it's more food issues on top of food issues. So if you're talking to people who want to trick or treat or parents of kids and they're worried about this holiday, any any last advice here on just kind of keeping it fun and making it as normal as it can be? Look, Halloween is a great holiday. It's really fun. It's an imaginative holiday. Roll with the imagination part of it. If you have more than one child, the rules apply for all. You know what I mean? You can have a little candy while we're trick-or-treating. You can have a chocolate bar, whatever. And a, a lot of, you know, we have our check stations, right? Check our blood sugars. If you're on a DEX, it's a little easier, right? Mm. On a DEXCOM. So that makes it a little easier. And really enjoy the moment. And don't dread it. And if you're going to dread it, don't dread it in front of your kids especially your kids with diabetes, like don't do that to them because they can't necessarily differentiate that you're dreading the diabetes aspect of it and they're going to internalize it and take it personally. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It's just like, it's like children don't understand when you're upset at the number on the meter screen. They think you're upset at them. Okay, so what, yeah. what happens? They find ways to change the number. Mm -hmm. I did. And, you know, I went and checked my blood sugar with wet hands so the number would be lower. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there are kids can't tell the difference, whether they're 10 or 5. They can't tell the difference that you're mad or you're upset. I should say you're upset at the number that's on the screen. They think you're upset at them. They are diabetes. You know what I mean? I do. They're dying. Yeah, they are. The and I Jeez. think it's, yeah, and it's it's so important for parents to know, it, at least I think it is, that you got to put your game face on. You can say, oh, I'm going to be up checking all night. This is crazy. Don't say it in front of your kids. Don't say it in front of your kids. Just do it. Just do it. Like, honestly, that's not fair. And I know parents they go through a lot with this disease i saw what my parents went through and they didn't have the technology nor did they have the, the support of a community i don't know how they survived but you 
you got to keep your game face on. you got to make it fun. You have to make it fun. And just do what you have to do. And let your kids take part in it. Say, look, could you do me a favor? Could you check your blood sugar? Like, let them participate. What's the carb on that? Do we know the carb? Here, it's on my phone. Look up my list. Like, so- something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, you know, kids, they like to help. And, you know, they have to know this stuff, too. Oh, yeah. Where are So, uh, what are you doing for Halloween? Do you still get dressed up? Do you? No. I, I did. Last year, I went as Abby from NCIS, which was really fun. <laughs> um, it was a great costume. I've done that a couple years in a row because it's just so much fun to wear. I don't know what I'm doing this year. And again, because I've been so focused yeah. on what's been going on in our world and healthcare and things like that and the hurricanes, I haven't had a chance to focus. You know, I'm hoping I can get together with friends at least. Um, and then we kick off into World Diabetes Day, and it's a really big whirlwind for me. I hope to do something fun this year, and I haven't been thinking about it because there's been so much leading up to this where I'm living. Like I said, it's the five-year anniversary of Sandy is on the 26th, I want to say. Nice. And there's still parts of my town where, like, people are trying to get back in their house, their homes. Wow. You know, so the past few years, it's been a little bit, my focus has been split, which is good because it's not all about me, even though it totally should be. Um, <laughs> well, well, let me make it about you because we're airing this show as we're talking here a little bit uh-huh. earlier this, but we're airing the show on your 40th anniversary. So from all oh, of my listeners to you, yeah, we're sending you a gift. Now we're congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to, Put this all over social media, and at least we can give you a big Halloween congratulations and way to go and everything else because it should not go unnoticed. I just think you're wonderful, Kelly. You do so much good for our community. You're always so much fun to talk to. I hope you have a great Halloween. Well, I hope you do, too, and thank you so much. I will um, I will have a glass of Prosecco for sure, and I will <laughs> toast it your way, and I will toast it to everyone in the DOC because, honestly, I can say – it's the best medicine and I I'm so grateful to be part of it and you do such a phenomenal job and you're so fun and the DOC is amazing and I really feel like sometimes when nobody else gets it I just know that I can turn to my community and you guys get it and I don't even have to utter the d word (laughs) to just be like hey guys I need your vibes and I get it so I appreciate it so much, and I love everyone, and I love what you do, so keep up the great work, and um, hopefully we can all have a little celebration together soon. Thank you for doing this show, though. I think it's going to be wonderful and help a lot of people, and as all your shows do. Well, thank you. And um, you rock. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. If you haven't read Kelly's blog, now you have to, right? Go ahead over to diabetes-connections.com. I will link up diabetes deliciousness in the show notes. And I, I'm just so happy to bring Kelly and her story to a new audience a couple of years later. So we'll see what the reaction is to these classic episodes. I'd like to start re-releasing them, doing things like this regularly in the new year. So let me know. Have you heard all 330 plus episodes of Diabetes Connections or have you joined us more recently and you're looking to catch up by, you know, having something like this come right to you? Because that's what's nice about these classic episodes. You don't have to search for them. They will come right to wherever you listen, whatever podcast app, they'll come up as new. And I think that'll really give uh, some new life to these episodes that I, I love and are so dear to me and our newer listeners haven't had a chance to hear. So I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Our regular episode is coming up on Tuesday. We drop episodes generally once a week on Tuesday with bonus episodes here and there. And I am talking to Leo Brown from The Amazing Race. You may have spotted his Dexcom in the episode that aired, that very first episode of The Amazing Race. There was a racer. He took a shirt off. There was his Dexcom and the diabetes community lit up 
So I was able to get in touch with him. We had a great conversation and that is coming up on Tuesday. Thank you to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here on Tuesday. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged. <laughs>